Hey everyone, it's Emily. Welcome to Mama from Scratch. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some staple farmhouse DIYs using a drop cloth. And no, I'm not sharing with you drop cloth curtains. We have other really beautiful staple decor pieces using a drop cloth that we're going to be making today so that you can decorate your home year round. You can obviously customize these to different seasons if you want to and tailor them to your home decor style. But I'm just going to give you a couple of ideas and you guys can run with it from there. I am going to share with you how I bleach my drop cloth in case you haven't done that yet to get that really soft and beautiful material and lighten it up and make it really workable because let me tell you when you get a drop cloth they're very stiff and you're thinking how am I gonna make this into something beautiful don't worry I'll share with you all the little details on how you can create some beautiful farmhouse DIYs using a drop cloth so if you're excited for today's video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and don't forget to hit that subscribe button join our family here for more DIYs and home decor related videos just like this so Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to show you really quick how to bleach your drop cloth. This is the color of it. It's very yellow and I'm just going to be using a two quart thing of bleach and we're actually going to cut this in half. So I have a top loader. I'm going to set the temperature to hot and I'm also going to put it on bulky. That way it knows because this is really thick. You'll find the center point, give it a little cut off the seam and then just rip it all the way down. It's really easy guys. I'm going to dump the whole thing of bleach in here just because it's such a large piece and then I'm gonna stuff it all in and I'm gonna let that soak try not to get your hands in it because it obviously it's pure bleach pretty much so um, use something to kind of make sure it's all submerged and mine sat there for three hours until my thing drained and this is the way it came out so obviously true white it's still a little bit yellow so I went ahead and put it into my laundry sink which is what I should have done to begin with I let that soak for five more hours and this is the coloring of it it's a nice beautiful white compared to the before on the left and then um, I have the other white material that I originally have is trying to get it close to and that's really a starky white so it comes out really nice softens the material it's not stiff anymore really easy to work with so there's a comparison before now we're going to jump into the DIY part I went ahead and measured out about 13 inches of length on the um, drop cloth here and I just used my cutting mat as a reference point to make sure it was pretty much square now the one side was frayed which I actually liked so I'm gonna mimic that on the other side and I left the one seam in you don't have to do that um, I actually suggest you cut it off and make your own seam because it's a little bit rougher looking than the one that we're gonna sew so I went ahead and just um, pulled it down and then I folded it under that way um, it wouldn't fray on me and then I went ahead and did a full line all the way down I just have it set to a regular stitch on here I don't do anything fancy with my sewing machine I know how to sew but I'm not super fancy at it so we're keeping it really basic I went ahead and cut off the end of it because that is sealed a little bit and to get those frays you're going to want to just start pulling out the little threads you can use a needle or some scissors to kind of pull, help pull it out a little bit but it will literally take you just a few minutes to fray the edges on it nothing too bad and if it snags no worry you'll just cut it off and keep going it's really easy Now to keep my edge from continuing to fray over time, especially if I wash it, I'm just going to run a seam all the way down um, the edge of it. That way it won't expand anymore. Really simple. You can sew it by hand if you need to. Not a big deal at all. So now I'm going to take these Arteza fabric markers. I got these when I was doing the laundry room and I'm so excited to use these. Um, I am just going to be using this charcoal color here and it gives such a nice line. There's actually two different edges on the pins that they have. They're really easy to work with. They don't um, bleed out or anything like that. Um, it's basically like a really nice marker, but it's paint for fabric. So you can wash this and it's not gonna come out or anything. I really like the control factor of this, especially using my little um, hard edge ruler here. That was definitely helpful. And so obviously I can only do 23 inches at a time, but that didn't really bother me. You'll see how I add a little bit of detail to connect the lines. 
it lined up fairly easy too um, I just did however many down the middle just so it was centered and then I straightened it out and then just started connecting those lines this dries really quickly too it didn't smear on me at all then to add a little more detail, I just added little dots on there to act as if I had stitched it on. And this is the way it looks when it's all done. I think it's a really beautiful, timeless table runner and it has that more of that hearth and hand look for about $2. For the next drop cloth DIY, I'm going to be making a pillow and I inserts are 20 by 20 so my pillow cover will be 22 by 22 and you'll see why because I ended up fraying part of the edges on it and I wanted to make sure I gave myself enough room to do that. So the one piece is 22 by 22. The next piece I'm going to make about four inches longer because I'm not using a zipper on this pillow. It's going to be opening up from a flap on the back, basically an overlap. Um, it's really easy to do and it's a way to do it without having to buy a um, zipper. I don't have any of those on hand. I've had this fabric for bleached for about six months now and I'm finally getting around to using it. So I'm really excited. Then I just fold that flap in half and cut that and that'll be the backing. So now for the fun part, we're going to start painting our design onto our pillow cover. Don't be intimidated. It's really easy. I got some painter's tape. Um, if you have thinner painter's tape, that'll work also. Um, I only have thick. So again, using what I have on hand, I started playing with the design. I wanted one thick stripe going up and down and then some smaller ones. And then we're going to add a few more details in. So I had some black fabric paint that on. I will say I wish I would have done a little lighter touch on the black paint, not so thick. Um, I actually like it, the white fabric seeing through it, but this is all personal preference. So after I got done with that, I took off um, part of the paint and I realized, oh yeah, my lines weren't going all the way across. <laughs> so um, I needed to fix that. So before I pulled off any more paint, I kind of realized what I was happening here. I added a little bit more fabric paint and to keep the lines super straight, I left the, um, the tape on there. So you can just work it as you go. Again, you don't have to do thick stripes like I am. It's completely up to you. You could put a saying on this if you want to for seasonal, for summer's coming up. You know, there's lots of things that you can do here. And I'm just adding a little bit more and then I got my detail brush and just made sure to match up those lines really nicely. Works really well. If you're gonna do long areas, definitely use tape, but this is just fixing it as you can see here. So I know it's not looking that pretty yet. Once I allowed that to dry fully, I went in with my um, hard ruler again and I took the other tip of the charcoal paint pen from Artiza and then I um, kept it on a side angle and I widened that strip. I couldn't find any of my small washi tape or anything so I was doing it by hand and I was trying to get the same uh, texture here so I wanted not a super thin line but I basically doubled the line if that makes sense. So once I put a few of those on the board, you'll see me go in with a lighter paint pen. It actually looks white, but it's not. It comes off a little bit more of a tan color, which I really like. And if you run it through the black um, fabric paint, then it actually darkens it. So just keep that in mind. Um, you might need to like just make sure you don't overlap it, but I really like the way this came together. I will leave the supplies I use down in the description box below in case you want to get any of them for yourselves, but I am such a fan of these fabric paint pens from Arteza. I'm really happy this isn't sponsored or anything. I just really, really like these a lot. So now that the front of the pillow is all dried, I'm laying out my back pieces here and you want to make sure that you sew the end seam because that is going to be open. And so all I do is I fold it over and then I'm just going to run a seam all the way down and that ensures that it's not going to fray when I wash it because yeah, it's going to be washed and everything over the course of the time. So you can see how the first one's done. 
I'm trying to figure out which way I had my pattern going. And then the second one is done here. So now we are going to basically pin all around the edge. That way nothing moves on us. And then we're going to sew all the way around all four corners. But I ended up actually only sewing three of the corners and I left one open. And you'll see why here in a second. Most of you, if you don't want a frayed edge, you're going to sew all four corners. I left the one corner open because I decided to fray one edge and give it a different detail. So I went ahead and pinned it and then I sewed it front facing. So I'm not gonna turn it inside out or anything for this. And I went all the way down, leaving about a good inch and a half or so. And then I'm going to pull those threads out and fray the edge. And I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. This is really popular right now. I've been seeing it a lot of places like uh, McGee & Co has it. Target has a few like these. I really like this design. And this took me a little bit longer because I had a couple edges to do, but just put on a good show or something and tear out all the little edges. And you can see how cool this looks. I am so happy with this pillow. This will easily go for 30 to 40 bucks on Etsy. So if you want to sell this, you totally could. I'm just happy I made it for two bucks. I really love it. Now I decided to make another pillow cover. This one's going to be more of a lumbar. So it's 22 by 14. And then I went ahead and cut that in half. And then I um, decided to pinch the fabric in the front. So basically I'm just pinning it. I left four inch gap between the edge and the part that I am pinning. And I'm pinning this because I'm actually going to sew this and we're gonna give it a little bit of detail. It's a really easy way to add a lot of detail to your pillow without a lot of work. Um, if you want to sew this, you totally can. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can use fuse tape as well. Although for this pinching, I would definitely suggest using like maybe a fabric glue instead. So I ended up with four equal. And so now I'm just running my um, thread down very, very close to the edge. Like I'm leaving a very, very, maybe an eighth of an inch or so. You want it to be very small. Otherwise your flap is going to be very large. We don't want that, at least I don't. So I went ahead and did that to all four of my lines on the front of my pillow. So see how that looks? It gives a little bit of detail and it wasn't much work at all. So now I decided to add a little bit of design to this. So I'm using the black fabric paint pen from um, Arteza and I'm going to draw V's on here and I decided just to use the edge of my flat ruler here to do this. Um, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to do this, but I decided just to go to town. I was having a lot of fun. Um, I could just keep sewing this day. I tell you, it was just so relaxing and I had a show on. So it's called Daryl's in Corfu. It's actually a, an, a British comedy that takes place in the 1930s, I believe. And it's based on a family's story and it's really good. I definitely recommend watching it. It'll just put you in a really good mood. You will laugh. So now that I got everything painted, I went ahead and took the two back pieces, made sure that they were overlapped. And then obviously the pretty sides are facing inward and the ugly sides are on the outside uh, for both of them. And we're gonna sew all the way around all four um, sides. So once you get that all sewed, go ahead and turn it inside out and then you're just going to put your pillow insert and it turned out really cute. You don't have to paint it. It would look good on its own, but I love how easy these projects are and with all the fabric you get, basically each project was like two bucks. I also made a placemat because I was having fun with the paint pens. I did blue and um, black together. You could also turn this into a kitchen towel as well.
Hope you enjoyed these farmhouse DIYs using a drop cloth. Let me know which one was your favorite and which DIY project you would like to recreate to decorate your home on a budget. If you happen to miss my last few videos, they'll be here on the screen as well as in the description box below for you to get more inspiration with. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And with that, I hope you all have an amazing day. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you in the next one.